Welcome to Excel in Finance video number 22. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 4 or the PDFs for chapter 4, click on the link below the video and you can download the workbook and the PDF. Hey, this is our second video in chapter 4. We're talking about future value and present value of lump sums. Now in last video we did future value. We put an amount in the bank and we want to know how much it's worth in the future. Uh, we're going to start off this video and just talk about the fundamental truth in finance and it is a dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received later. Hmm. It says this is true because of interest. Well here's the deal. Here's your time times zero time one. You could you're offered two, one of two things. You can either have this dollar, dollar received today, or this dollar, a dollar received in one year. Which would you prefer? Well, of course, you want this one. And the reason why is you can take that dollar and invest it. Put it in the bank. Uh, let's say we earn 10% and we get $1.10. Now, Usually you can get some return. There are some times in history where um, you know the return is incredibly low or something like that. But in general, uh, this is just going to be the case. You want to take your dollar now and do something with it. Invest it, um, whether in uh, equity or debt or a bank account or whatever, because you can earn interest. All right, um, let's talk about present value and future value. Now we've already talked about present value and when we talked about present value we talked, I'm sorry, we already talked, looked at how to calculate future value and when we did that we used the term present value and the way we thought about present value is how much do we have to put in the bank today to get some amount in the future, right? So let's look at it this way because when, when we humans encounter the concept of present value for the first time it is not the easiest concept. However, let's see if we can make it a little bit easier. So we put $1 and notice we get some interest. So we're going to get a uh, $1.10. They're going to give us 10%, so we have a $1.10. We're going this direction through time. We knew the number here and we used a formula to calculate the number here. Now notice this is interest and we're adding interest. So we go from the present value plus some interest this direction present value is going the other direction, right? If we know we want a dollar ten in one year, how much do I have to put in the bank today? So I always think of it as interest going backwards because remember what's the difference? Even in this example, here's the future value. I need to know what the present value is. That's ten cents there. The difference is ten cents. We're taking out all the interest. Adding interest is going forward. Taking the interest out or subtracting is going backwards. Now let's just start off with the best example to understand. If you want a million dollars when you retire in 40 years, how much do you have to put in the bank right now? We're going to have to assume some interest rate or what's called a discount rate but it will be on a larger scale the same as this. We know some amount we want and we need to take all the interest out and figure out what we have to plop in the bank today. All right, the formula we're going to use. Here's the formula we've been using to go forward from the present value number to, to give us the future value. This is just a little deductive proof if you like those of why this is our formula. And you can look at that if you want. Here's the variables. They're exactly the same variables. Here's our formula. The only slight difference is when we um, do annual interest rate, they, when you're doing present value calculations, you use the term discount rate. Here's our Excel function. Oh, instead of FV, it's PV. It's got the same rate the same NPR with the same double comma because we have to skip the PMT until next chapter and future value. Now look at this note right here. Present value function will always give a negative answer because this is the amount to invest. So the way to think of this is if we want 
a million dollars future value when we retire, this thing is going to calculate a minus number because it's how much we need to put in the bank now. All right, let's look at example uh, six here. I'm going to actually try and blow this up. How much do we need to put in the bank today? We're going to assume an annual interest of 10%. Assume n equals 12, which is uh, compounded monthly, to be a millionaire in 40 years. Here's our uh, variables, future value, annual interest rate, number of compounding periods per year, and years. We plug it into our formula. When we do all the calculation, we get $18,621.74. When we plug it into Excel, we get this same uh, number here. Notice that's negative. Present value is going to spit out a negative number because notice that Excel knows that the money going into the investment has a negative cash flow. So if we want to be a millionaire in 40 years and we could earn a 10% compounded monthly, we would need to invest that. Now, you know, it depends on what you're investing in, right? You're not going to go out in 2010 and get, you know, some sort of 40-year CD that's paying 10%. So if you're doing the stock market or a combination of the bonds and stocks and some cash, right? This is all an estimate, but it does tell us the power of compounding interest because look, here's our million bucks. That's how much we had to put in lump sum interest earned. Now later when we get to discussing stocks, we'll see that history um, over long history, periods of history, you can earn 10% uh, annualized rate over a 40-year period. We currently are uh, in a difficult period. You know, in 2000, 2001, stock market, stock market crashed. It was called the internet bubble. And the market has basically tried traded sideways since then. So over the last 10 years, it's been much harder to earn a good return. If you can pick good stocks, which um, uh, some people can do, some people cannot do. Uh, if you can pick good stocks, then there were some good buys over that period. But uh, overall, the markets, uh, the Dow and the NASDAQ have basically gone sideways. But uh, forget, forget this. We're talking the math here. Let's look at this a little bit further. Million. Uh, subtract what we put in, we got the interest. Now here's a diagram, and this, this always helped me when I was learning present value. I re you really want to think of this as interest, taking all the interest out, because we've said up front we want a million dollars. And let's say we could get a bank account that's at 10% uh, for 40 years. Then if we could get a contract like that, we would put this amount in and it would slowly grow. Now, if we put this in here and it slowly grows, it's adding the interest to get to here. But in order for us to figure what to put here, we had to calculate this. So we, we had this number and we went, we knew this. So we went backwards and removed all this interest to get that. So that's a good way to think of present value. It's like interest going backwards, taking out all the interest to see what to deposit. Let's go over to Excel and make this calculation. Let's see, I think we're going to go to example six. Here's our annual interest rate or discount rate, 10%. Present value is what we're trying to calculate. Number of compounding periods per year, years, and our future value. We don't have that amount here. I'm going to go ahead and calculate explicitly my period rate. 10% divided by months. That gives me my monthly or period rate. Total periods, years times per, uh, number of compounding periods per year, 480. I'm going to go ahead and calculate my factor here. 1 plus the annual, the uh, period rate, period rate caret total number of periods. Mm, 53, that's a big one, mostly because year. That is the most powerful variable when you're trying to make money. It's keeping it in for a long time. Because remember the compounding, we looked at these uh, chart right here, right? 
the the longer you the longer time the bigger it gets and even on any particular interest rate you can see it starts to go uh, get bigger and bigger I'm back here on six so we have a lot of years so I'm simply going to take this one that's our future value and divide it by this. 18,000. Let's go ahead and uh, do the math. I'm going to do the math. Here's a little deductive proof, just like we saw over there in the PDFs, but here in Excel, if you want to look at that. All right, so we start with, I'm going to do the whole formula from scratch. So I'm going to say a million bucks divided by. Now, we're going to have to get our parentheses right here. We're going to do uh, division. 1 plus, and I'm going to take my period rate. Actually, I'm going to do the whole thing here. So there's our period rate. Now, let's just say I'm making this formula right here. You can already see I put the two parentheses, and they're both black. If I start and go and do a caret here, what's going to happen? Oh, the caret gets calculated first. So even though I'm going left to right here, boom, division, boom, that caret is going to get calculated first, which it's supposed to be, because this caret has to um, be attached to this. So now we're going to do multiplying, so we have to do it inside parentheses to force that first. I'm going to say 12 times my 40. All right, and that formula will work right there. The, technically, the way it will work is everything in the parentheses will be calculated, everything in parentheses, then it will do the caret, and then it will do the division, which is exactly how it should go. And then finally, we can do it with our PV function. The rate, I'm going to go ahead and use my period rate there, right there, comma, total NPRs, total number of periods. Notice these are, these were the same with future value, right? They'll actually be the same. We're going to see other financial functions. They've kept, you know, the rate, the NPR, mostly the same. So as we learn more financial functions, they'll all tend to be very similar. PM, PMT, that's a period payment. We don't have any cash flows like a loan payment. Future value, that is a big fat positive. We want that million bucks. By the way, haven't mentioned this, we will absolutely talk about type when we get to like loan payments for annuities. We'll talk about that in chapter five. All right. Oh, it's negative, exactly as it should be. If you don't like those parentheses, you could change the formatting. Control one. Control one just opens format cells. I'm going to go to currency and select maybe that one. All right, what's the total cash, uh, total interest? We already uh, saw this astounding um, fact here, a million. And then you can minus one of these positives, but you can't minus this because that's negative, so I'm going to add it. And then our conclusion. Broop. We would have to invest eighteen thousand six hundred twenty-one dollars and seventy-four cents today if we had, if we want to have a million bucks in forty years, and we could earn an annual interest rate discount rate of ten percent compounded, twelve times a year. All right, now let's go do another exciting example. Let's go to e example seven. How much would we have to invest today? If we want to have $150,000 for our daughter's college tuition in 18 years, and we can earn an annual interest rate uh, discount rate of 6.95% compounded to 365 times a year. All right, um, here's our variables typed into the cell. So let's go ahead and do this one uh, straightforward. We'll calculate the period rate and total periods, and then we'll just use the present value function. Equals, we have our annual rate, and we have to divide it by all those compounding periods. So that's going to be pretty small. That 
if you hold your cursor, you can see the little screen tip. It's trying to be polite and show you, but that's a railroad or a fence that Bill Gates and his pals are putting up so you, you can't see. You actually have to expand the column here. You could also decrease the decimals. The, there's 15 significant digits. That's the maximum number that Excel can see. All right, I'm going to decrease the digits. Always keep the unrounded number while we do our calculations. All right, uh, total number of periods, 18 years times 365. Those are how many days there are. Finally, I'm going to come down here and just use the PV function. Our rate, that's always going to be period rate, comma, number of periods. Notice period, daily rate, number of days, always the same unit comma, comma, future value, 150K. That's positive because the present value will spit out a negative. I've got to calculate the interest equals this. And again, this is negative. So we could go minus the positive, but we're, it's a negative there, so we have to add it. All right, that's uh, pretty good. If we would have to, we would have to invest forty two thousand nine hundred thirty seven eighty eight today if we want to have one hundred and fifty k for our daughter's college tuition in eighteen years, and we could earn an annual interest rate discount rate because we're we're doing present value of six point nine five percent compounded three hundred sixty five days a year. Let's go ahead and change this. We can only find uh, four percent, and it's being compounded uh, quarterly. So we change those input variables. We see we go up a significant amount that we have to invest. But still, um, if it were possible to find that much money and plop it in a little 18-year uh, or 20-year or whatever, or no, not it. You want to do it in less than 20 years so you can take it out. But there you go, present value calculation. Two great examples. The uh, you want to be a millionaire <laughs> example and saving up to pay for your kids' college education. When we come back, we have two more important topics still related to lump sums, but we want to be able to calculate NPR, which is total number of periods, and also the rate. So far, we've done future value, present value, but in the next two videos, we'll see how to make some slightly different calculations. All right, see you next video.